Number two is what? These are minimum conditions for success. We're talking for the passing grade. Number three, all four are necessary. Imagine with me now, uh, the comparison to the workplace is a good one, although many of you are students, but you can try to imagine with me. Maybe some of you have already worked, is that right? So, your boss comes in, he walks into the office, the employees are sitting, and he says, every single one of you, every single employee is in big trouble. Every single employee is doomed and you're going to find out what's going to happen to you tomorrow. Unless you do one, two, three, four. And he walks out. Now your boss says this, your job is important to you. It's how you pay your rent. It's how you take care of yourself and provide for yourself. And it's what's going to lead to your worldly success. Is that right? Are you going to say now when the boss walks out, uh -huh, he's not talking to me. He's talking to somebody else. That guy, psh, that guy's a loser. That guy is in trouble, man. But me, I'm, I'm doing fine. No, this surah is with that kind of a tone and more serious than that. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is addressing every single one of us. So you don't look to your brother or your sister and say, man, you better watch out. No, you say, you look in the mirror and you say, yeah, you better watch out. Talking to yourself. This is number one. Number two, when your boss says one, two, three, four, do you say, I like one and two and I'm good at them. So I'm going to do them. But three and four are a bit difficult to do, so I'm not going to do them. Or I don't enjoy doing three and four. Or I don't know how to do three and four very good, so I'm going to leave it to somebody else to do it. Are you going to do that? Or are you going to say, my success here lies on completing all four of these? Because my boss didn't say whoever does one or two or one or two or three of these. He said one, two, three, four. If you don't have these, you're doomed. This is the way Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is talking. So we don't say, hey, calling to the truth, that's for the sheikh so-and-so to do. That's for the da'i so-and-so, that's for this guy and that guy. For me, I don't have to call to the truth. I don't have to invite people. I don't have to remind people. I don't have to advise people. No. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, each and every one of us, if you want to succeed, you have to be from that group. And you can't do it for a day or two or a week and then say, hey, I'm tired, man. Somebody you know the other day talked to me harshly when I tried to advise them. And then that day the guy slammed the door on me. And then that guy, the guy got upset with me and he doesn't want to talk to me anymore. So you know what? I'm not going to be able to be patient. It's too hard. Forget it. Well, then you're going to lose your job according to your boss. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, walillahi al-mathal al-a'la, there's no comparison to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, is saying that we are doomed unless we have all four. These four are one organic whole. Okay? What does it mean when it's an organic whole? It means it's inseparable. So we live in a world today where some people say, Brother, don't make such a big deal about prayer. Iman is in my heart. And Allah said, those who believe are saved. Alhamdulillah, Allah ghafur rahim. Allah is the most forgiving, most merciful. Why are you making such a big deal about hijab, sister? Why are you trying to talk about these uh, 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 acts of worship? What about what's in the heart? What about I love Allah? Okay, if you love Allah, and if you truly believe, yes, it's in your heart, but it has to lead to action. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, إِلَّا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ The two go hand in hand. There is no such thing as a believer who doesn't do good deeds. Good deeds increase your iman, and a sign of your iman existing is that you do good deeds. They're inseparable, is that right? But the problem here is that many of us, we understand the first two. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions them throughout the Qur'an. But here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala added two types of actions, is that right? When he said, إِلَّا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ Those who believe and do good deeds, in joining to the truth, calling people to the truth, and encouraging people to be steadfast and patient, aren't these actions? Aren't these actions? They're actions. They're something that you do. You go to people and you talk to them and you tell them. It's an action. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is specifying them. Why? When you specify something, this is al-khas, ba'd al-umum. This is mentioning something specifically after something general was mentioned. When you do that, it means number one, you're emphasizing it because it's important. It means number two, that you're reminding people about it because it gets overlooked and forgotten about. You understand? So the example is that, let's say for example now, we have a person...
you as a person, you consider yourself to be a good person. You believe that something, for example, is wrong, so you don't do it. You're walking down the street, you see some children with a baseball bat smashing windows. Is that right? Smashing windows. Push, push, push. You think to yourself, you say, I'm a good person. I believe that that's wrong. And because I believe that's wrong, I'm not going to do it. I would never do it. But I wonder if I should talk to them and tell them that it's wrong. So you think to yourself, should I say something? Should I try to stop them? Then you think to yourself, but what if I become the baseball? What if they turn on me and start hitting me with their bats? Right? So you say, I mean, there may be some hardship that has to be faced. It could be difficult. I don't know how they're going to react if I talk to them. But if you truly believe with full conviction, then that belief and that conviction is going to lead you not only to act yourself, but to call and encourage others. You can't stand by idly and watch people do something like that. Because your belief, if it's true belief, it has to move you to say something at least. Do you understand? So this is how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is drawing for us the picture of how these are connected. That's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions that those who truly believe, they call, they enjoin the good, they forbid the evil. Wala yakhafuna lawma tala'im. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and they're not afraid about the blame of the blamers. They're not worried about what people might say, about how people might react, because they understand that that's necessarily going to happen. They may hear some harsh words, they may even be hurt, they may even be killed for what they are calling to. And this is what happened to the prophets and messengers and the righteous people that came before. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying that each one of these necessarily requires the next one. They're inseparable. And when you call to the truth, you have to be patient, you have to persevere and be ready for the hardship that may befall you. So we look at examples like Umar radiallahu anhu. He's on his deathbed. Umar radiallahu anhu has, has been assassinated, is that right? By Abu Lu'lu al-Majusi, may Allah curse him. So he came and he stabbed Umar radiallahu anhu something like 13 times. Till when he drank milk, the milk was coming out of the wounds in his abdomen. So they brought him to his uh, home, I believe. And he is there on his deathbed. People are coming to say salam to him and make dua for him. So a young boy came and said salam to him and passed by. Now he's dying. Imagine yourself in this situation. You are in pain. You are bleeding to death. You are suffering. And then the boy has already left. He said, call that boy back. Call him back. Call him back quickly. So they called the boy back. He said, boy, pull your pants up. Pull your pants up. He called him back to remind him about something that most of us, we are negligent of it today. He said, pull your lower garment up. It's more fearful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and it's cleaner for your clothes. He's on his deathbed, but he cannot let a chance to enjoin good and forbid evil pass him by. You understand now, when we have true conviction in something and we want to live by it, then necessarily we have to encourage others and recommend others and advise others to the truth. Even he's at this moment of his death, he cannot let this pass by. Even some of us, we look at it as it's a small sin. It's not a small sin actually, it's something big. That a man has to keep his clothes up above his ankles. So, we have to understand that all four are necessary and they're really one organic whole. The example that's given is that Iman is a seed that is planted. But this uh, seed is worthless if it doesn't turn into a tree. And that's the amr salih the good deeds. And these good deeds, they have to produce some fruits which are enjoining others to the truth and enjoining others to be patient and perseverant. That is the fruit that the tree produces. You understand? So, our degree of success, now I go back to our brother, he made a point. He said it kind of represents both. Because our degree of success depends on how much we did in each of these categories. But salvation requires that you do each one. Minimum criteria to pass, you have to do all of them. How well are you going to do in your marks? 
How well did you do in all of these? How strong was your belief? How much good did you do? How much did you call to the truth? How much were you patient and encouraging others to be patient as well? Does that make sense? So we understand that this surah is setting the minimum criteria for success, but we can excel within the area of each one of these criteria to be the best of the best. So we said, there should be a balance. The level of Iman should be reflected in your good deeds, in joining to the truth and in joining to patience and steadfastness. Real Iman must lead to good deeds. Actions and Iman are inevitably joined together. Real Iman must lead to calling others to the truth. Another, another point here that we can mention is that if a doctor prescribes medicine, if a doctor prescribes medicine, do you take half of the medicine? He says, take this pill and that pill and that pill. You're like, I'll take this one, forget this one. I'll take this one, forget that one. You'll take all of them. If he says, take antibiotics for this period of time, from beginning of end, make sure you complete the entire course. Do you say halfway through, I feel better, I'm not going to take any more? It doesn't work like that. It doesn't work like that. You're going to take all of it because you want to fully cure yourself. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave us a prescription that we need to take all four parts of the remedy for it to succeed. This is why, you know, we have so many problems today. Islam is a complete package and a total system. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Udkhudu fi silmi kafa. Enter into submission completely. It's not halfway, part of it. It's not a buffet. I like this, I don't like that, I'll eat some of this, I don't like that. No. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying it's all there. The only way for the system to work if we enter into it completely. So sometimes we find in even Muslim societies we have problems. Islam has the solution to that problem, but the solution only exists if we implement Islam in all aspects of our life. So we talk about Islamic finance or Islamic this or Islamic that. Those can't exist until you actually have a comprehensive and complete and proper Islamic system that we are implementing as individuals, as families, and as societies. <clears throat>